right guys so in this section of the video i'll be teaching you how to make dxf file so that we can laser cut our parts out in delrin for our linear odometry so you can see here i'm using fusion and i also have the vexcad library installed you can use any cad software of your choice but i'm choosing to use fusion because i know it the best so we're gonna go ahead and get started so i've already measured out everything beforehand so we're just gonna do a sketch so you want to click on the top base of c channel and click create sketch and this will bring you to this view or you can click top it'll bring you to this view so this sketch doesn't actually know where all the dots are so we're gonna click p for project and then we're gonna click on one of the dots there and you can see this purple thing will show up and now i'm gonna add our bowl for our screw to go through so this would be 4.2 millimeters i'm working in metric here and we're gonna put rectangular patterns so we can get all nine holes here so I'm going to have three in this direction with negative 25.4 distance. And then here with 25.4 distance is free as well. We can go ahead and click OK. And now you can see that all of our holes are created. So next we're going to add the main rectangle shape. So this is going to be 40 millimeters by 50 millimeters. So the bend radius that we need for the C channel here. So it's about three millimeters. So we're going to go ahead and do this and the whole distance is 12.7 but we're going to add 3 for our bend radius 4.2 there and as you can see now we need to do the same thing on the bottom because there's two holes here you don't need to use the third one but you can if you want for more stripes so here i'm going to do 12.7 plus 3 and then i'm going to create my hole all right so we're gonna extend this a bit more because i didn't realize it was this far so we're just like modeling as we go so 40 and then i'll just add 10 that looks pretty good to me and now we have to extend the flange down so we can actually fit the omni wheel itself so i'll go into the middle here and then i'll extend it by 50 millimeters because that's the amount that we need to extend it by if we need 10 millimeters of travel up and down and i'm gonna add a little bit to the end so that our holes have somewhere to go I'll go ahead and put 12.5 looks about right and now I'm gonna connect it to the main bit so we have our triangle here and now I'm gonna add our actual slots here okay so I'm gonna add around 7.5 millimeters because this is gonna be where our top of our rotation sensor is and then I'm gonna add our center to center slot because we want it to be able to move up and down so there we go 10 and then I'm going to go 4.2 for our screw size. And now, since the distance between the holes on the distance sensor are 1 inch, I'm going to go 1 inch. And then I'm going to put my center to center slot again. Here we go, 10. And then 4.2 for our hole. So you can see that this is looking pretty good now. But we need to make sure we don't have our sharp edges, of course. So we're going to go ahead and add a fillet. I think 5 looks about right, so we're just going to go 5. And then I'm just going to add 25 millimeter fillet there or even 50. That looks about right. Okay, so now that we have one side done, it's looking pretty good. So we can now mirror it over to our other side. So I'm going to go ahead and go in the middle, create a line and then mirror. I'll select everything that I want to mirror, which is all of this. And then we can go ahead and mirror it over the mirror line. And you can see that creates a mirror for us. But on this side, we don't actually want these two holes because we want the slot to be a square for our insert to fit in so i'm gonna go ahead and actually delete both of these holes and then i'm gonna go put a point here so we know the right position delete this and then we're gonna create our center rectangle here so i believe the diameter for the high strength shaft is about 6.35 so we're gonna set this to 6.5 have a good tolerance for a laser cutter okay and then we're gonna of course extend our rectangle 10 millimeters down so we have this and then we're gonna create another 6.5 6.5 6.5 and now we're gonna go ahead and connect these two and then of course we're gonna fill it the edges i'll just go one here all right it looks pretty good now so we're gonna go ahead and finish our sketch we're gonna create a new sheet metal object using our extrude here so we want to select all the parts that we want to be in our delrin model so i'm gonna go ahead and do that here and then we're gonna extrude it by 1.5 and then we're gonna set it to a new body and then we're gonna want to convert this to a sheet metal so we're gonna click convert to sheet metal and then here and now that it's sheet metal, we want to add our actual bend lines. So 
we want our bend line to be on this edge at half of 12.7 so we're going to put 12.7 and then divide it by two here and now we're going to create our bend line here you can see that this is where we're going to bend our delrin it looks right so we're going to also create these notches here so that our plastic can get bent in the right location so there are my notches and now since we've done it on one side i'm gonna go ahead and create it on the other side too so mirror and then mirror it here you can see it's been converted to the other side so after this we're gonna select all of the parts that we want to cut our notches out with and then i'm gonna extrude and use cut so there are notches and next we want to add our actual bend lines so we can see what it looks like in the CAD model. So I'm going to add my bend lines here and then once we go to sheet metal we can go create and then bend. Then this is a stationary side and I'm going to select this. You can see that it's bent but it's in the wrong way. So we have to change 90 to negative 90. Now it'll line up pretty well. And next we're going to want to bend the other side and then it's going to be this and our bend is going to go here. So negative 90 as well. So now you can see that our Delrin is perfectly wrapped around our C channel. So now we have to export it to our CAD program. So I'm going to go create and then create flat pattern. And then this is our stationary face. And now we have our flat pattern here. And then we're going to go select it here. And then we're going to click export as DXF. And now we can go ahead and export to our computer as our DXF file. And then after this, we're going to go to our laser cutter and see how we laser cut it out. So we're gonna bend this piece of Delrin here. So we need this heat gun because if you use a flame, it'll catch fire. So we also have this blower to cool down the Delrin, but that's optional, you don't need it. And we're gonna use a vise so we could get a nice 90 degree angle. We're gonna use these L channels so that the Delrin doesn't get marked because the vise has sharp jaws. So you wanna clamp this where you wanna bend it. So I'm going to clamp it there because I want to bend it here. I'm going to bend it here and here. So I'm going to clamp it in the vise here. And then we have these two C channels so that it's very hot. So don't touch it with your hands. And one of them is to shield the heat from a uh, part that you don't want to heat up. So I'm going to start the heat gun and then you can see I'm shielding the part that I don't want to heat up to make sure it doesn't morph. Well, now I'm flying a bit meat to the entire thing and then you can start pushing to see if it's not a bend. You can see it's about the best. Let's switch to a cold one and then push down. Okay, it's bent at a 90 degree angle now. So we're going to cool it down. Wait, if you don't have a blower. Okay, so now that we've bent one side, we could see it's a nice 90 degree angle and there's no burning on the Delrin too. So you can just repeat that for the other side. Now that we've bent both sides, we're going to take this back to the desk and then assemble it. Okay, since this bend isn't perfectly 90 degrees, we're going to use this piece of C-channel to constrain the sides so that they are perfect. And for this Odom, we're going to use these two inch tracking wheels so they're omni wheels but we use two of them because it rolls smoother and you can see one is not perfect circle so to use this with our shaft we want to put in our hubs you could put them in 45 degrees offset this is what it looks like when it's 45 degrees offset and then you could put it in with no offset and this is what that looks like then you should be able to just push them together and they will lock there. So you can see that they're locked 45 degrees offset to each other. So now that we have that assembly, we're going to put in two more square inserts so that it spins with the low strength shaft. Okay, we're going to put that off to the side for now. I'm using 
I use nylon screws because they're lighter than normal screws, but you could use normal screws if you wish. So the reason we use these screws is because they're lighter and for the Odom pods, you don't actually need it to be very strong. So you can see that my template has all these holes in the top. So of course, we're going to put screws in the top. You don't need all of them. You could just have maybe two on each side. So we have holes to mount them still inside. So now we have two of these odometry pods. You can see that they move freely up and down and side to side. So on a robot, you would want, if you have all Omni wheels this season, you would want one horizontal one and one vertical one like this. And you could see that the wheels are in opposite, are 90 degrees offset to each other. But if you have traction, which we're going to change to later, you only need one vertical odom. So that's what we're going to set up. It's fun. You can mount the wheel anywhere on your robot. Just make sure that it's like roughly in the center. That way it will track more accurately. So I will be mounting mine around here. You have to make sure that it can still move up and down. You can see it still move up and down. So I'm going to mount this with this channel. It goes down by itself a bit. And if we put it on the table, you can see that it spins with the wheels, which means that it's cracking properly. But now we have to wire up the rotation sensor in your brain. Make sure it has some space for the wire to wiggle. And here, wire it up to two. We go to our devices and then the port that you plugged it into. You should see that this should move when you spin the wheel. Um, when you move it on the ground, it should also move. So that's the basic hardware setup. You can watch the other videos to see how you actually program this to tell your robot where it is.